Hi all. Our instructive game today will have the theme of attacking, but maintaining control of the dark squares in the process. To demonstrate this theme, I'm choosing the game Jacob Agard versus Mark Hebden played in last year's British Championship. So Agard playing white played e4, and Hebden played e5. So we have here a Roy Lopez. After a6, bishop a4, this is all standard theory now. So rook e1, b5, bishop b3. And now after castles c3, Hebden doesn't choose the martial gambit with d d5. He instead chooses a quieter system with d6. So I believe this is the closed Breyer system. So black now playing c5. Agard played d4, and after queen c7, black usually enjoys some semi-open c-file pressure after exchanging on d4. After knight d2, Hebden did exchange on, on d4. Rook d8 now was played. Potentially, black might liberate the position by playing ed, and after takes d5 at some point in the game. So Agard played quite a controversial move now, and from the theme of the game, attacking with dark square control. This is very, very interesting now. He played d5, so it gives up potentially control of the c5 square now. So black could easily manoeuvre now with knight b7 to c5 to get a nice knight and maybe increase space on the queen side. But, on the other hand, the e5 pawn is now locked down. It can't play e takes d4, which means it's more of a fixed target for when white later plays f4, as we'll see in the game. And if that's a fixed target which can be undermined, it can be used to break open the dark squares onto black's king. So we'll see all this later in action. But first, we see this positional plan of black to, to use that c5 square, which is the immediate um, benefit black gets from d5. So after knight f1, we see now a5, securing the knight outpost to stop any b4s. Bishop e3, and now knight c5. So Hebden's done that positional plan. Agard is not really that worried. He plays now rook c1. And after bishop d7, he plays knight g3. So this knight um, is using this classical maneuver. And often it goes to f5, especially if there's no um, bishop i in the f5 square. In this position, though, after rook dc8, now Agard plays knight h4. So this immediate uh, tactic of knight takes c4 is not working here to try and expose that tactically, that knight, because knight takes e4, bishop takes, knight takes c5, followed by queen h5, and we see this double attack. So the knight um, can't be exploited like that. So after knight h4, Hebden now weakens slightly his king. He plays g6 to stop any knight f5s. So as we noted earlier, that pawn can't play e takes d4, so it's fixed. It's a fixed target. And now Agard uses uh, that fixed target. He plays f4, so he's trying to rip open these dark squares on black's king. Hebden now tries to defend with knight g4. So he's trying to weaken uh, white's pawn structure on, on, on the um, king side and get rid of some of these attacking resources. Now, though, Agar plays knight takes g6. So if knight takes e3, that would be a blunder, big advantage to white. Knight takes e7, followed by rook takes e3, and if the king has to take on e7, then big advantage after fe, de, queen h5, according to Ribka. White is um, a pawn up and also a tremendous pressure on the f-file. So that's no good for black. Horrible pawns as well. So in this position, after knight takes g6, Hebden plays fg, and now hg is played. And we have a very dynamic position here now. But bishop h4 is played by Hebden. Perhaps uh, this was too ambitious. Perhaps he could have tried to secure the dark squares with e takes f4 here, bishop takes, and say rook f8, leaving the bishop potentially to, to play um, bishop f6 at some point. In the game, though, this bishop h4, this threat of um, bishop takes g3 was just parried now by Agard by playing king h2, welcoming black. If he lost the bishop, the dark square bishop, these dark squares are going to be under fire later with no dark square defender. So we'll see this now. After e takes f4, bishop takes f4, rook f8. Now Agar plays bishop h6, but not really with immediate material um, considerations. Because after queen d8, this is a fine exchange sacrifice move by Hebden. Uh, white dare not take that, that exchange sacrifice. Let's have a look why. And it's, the, the reason is in the dark squares. Queen takes f8, 
and black now potentially has moves like queen h6, also bishop f6 to e5. So, for example, queen d2, bishop f6, and black will start to be better in this position, believe it or not. That lovely dark squared uh, blockader of the e-pawn, that bishop, will be amazing for the attack soon. So say rook f1, queen e7, and already Ribka is assessing this position as better for black. Dark square blockade, possibilities of even queen h4 check after bishop e5. So Agard very wisely played positionally here. After queen d8, he refused that positional sacrifice. He wants to keep control of the dark squares. He plays queen d2. So not only uh, preventing black from playing bishop g5, also preventing rook f4. Also, the queen reserves the possibility of queen d4 using that line, which was previously blasted open by the f4 move. So after queen e7 now, Agard now plays e5. So not giving uh, black control of that dark square e5. And also, at the same time as blocking it up, he's creating this potentially menacing pass pawn. So a beautiful move there, e5. So bishop takes g4 was played now, and now Agar plays queen d4, so he's hitting that bishop. If the bishop goes back, it will be much worse for black in, in many variations. Let's have a quick look. Bishop h5, knight takes, uh, a beautiful exchange sacrifice Ribka finds here, knight f6, and this is a crushing position, because of bishop g5 here. Very complex tactical line, but uh, black's being busted here. So that's one example. Let's move the bishop back to um, d7, just e6, and now we see black getting thumped in terms of his king. So knight f5, queen g3, and black's getting really thumped here on the dark squares again, particularly f8. So in this position, that's, that will be all over for black as well, this kind of variation. So here, after this queen d4, black was really in trouble. He played bishop takes g3, so giving uh, Agar free reign of the dark squares now, just bringing his king out temporarily. It's not really that scary. He's positioned, he gains uh, a trump card now, but he gives it up immediately. He gives up to win the exchange because he has a brilliant idea now. This is a brilliant tactical sequence. E takes d6, allowing queen g5 check, so the king goes uh, relatively safely now to king h2, and after knight d7, Agar plays rook f1. So he's potentially trying to rip open now the light squares to try and unblockade this d-pawn. So he does so after knight f6 spectacularly. So this is a second sort of theme. Rook takes f6. So it's become from a dark square attack to a light square attack. Rook takes f6. And now d7. And black is really powerless. According to Ribka, black's busted here. This rook can't be taken, obviously, because of d8 queening. So rook d6 to stop the queen. Bishop b3. Offering the rook. Now this is a brilliant variation. Queen takes c1, loses now because of d8 queen check. Rook takes d6 check, and black's getting mated. King f8, rook queen h8 mate. So this this rook can't be taken. Um, Hebden plays this a4, but it's all over. Rook c8 check, and now queen giving up the queen temporarily, the, the queen that's just been promoted to play rook c7 mating again. So this is mating now in two, all moves. Um, you know, well, rook d7 is the longest defense, but, but if, for example, king g8, queen g7 mate, if king f8, queen h8 mate, if um, king e8, quick queen e8 mate. So this is just, just the forced mate here. So that was a beautiful dark square attack, which turned into a light square attack. Let's have a quick look in overview and summary at this game. So it was a Roy Lopez where Agard controversially, controversially uh, locked up the position by playing d5. So he played um, Hebden's, uh, against Hebden's provocative move to play d5. Um, so black really wasn't threatening e takes d4. But the downside of this, although Hebden gained this dark square, this c5 post, you know, Agard ripped open the f file using the fact that this pawn was a fixed target. So he got all these dark squares going for, in white's favour against black's king. He was able to open up the dark squares. And after king h2, you know, Hebden's uh, bishop h4 was, is slightly questionable, I think, because um, he really didn't want to give up this bishop. And this beautiful queen d2 now stops any bishop g5s. And after e5... He's really emphasizing all the trumps, not giving black the e5 square,
t creating this potentially dangerous passed pawn and also menacing threat to e6. So after bishop takes g4, queen d4, and black is really on the downhill now, according to Ripka. Black's had it. Hebden gives up the dark squared bishop, and now we see um, white voluntarily giving up the dark square um, attack immediately to exchange it for a light square attack. With, with these pawns coming in, as, as if he can get his bishop on this light square diagonal, that's it for black's king. So this beautiful move now, rook takes f6, and d7, it's an absolutely beautiful combination here from Agard. So bishop b3, with um, decisive threats. So um, after a4, this is all over. I hope you enjoyed that game. Please leave any comments on YouTube. Thanks very much.